Welcome everybody, this is Hazard Reborn and we're playing Warframe. Warframe is a free-to-play game. It's been out in its beta phase pretty much for almost a year now. And... Well, the whole idea of it is Space Ninjas and I think that pretty much says it all. Let's get right into it. In this video I'll be talking about the game, just a small introduction of what it's about, and, you know. A little bit history of it, I guess. Uh, the mechanics and in-game, what it's like, the graphics and a whole bunch of those things. And the content, what it offers. And for a free-to-play game, what it actually gives you, you know, what you can do, pretty much, more or less. I'll just head away right, in, right away into the game now and um, pick it up from there. Basically, like I said, it's a free-to-play game. It's a third-person perspective game. Uh, reminiscent of a first-person shooter, but also an action game. You have melee weapons, you have weapons that are pretty much, you know, uh, long-range weapons. You have... The whole layout of the game is pretty much you have a Warframe, which is your character. You unlock these, you collect materials to build them, or you can buy them from the shop uh, with platinum which is the real money currency and from then on each character has a primary weapon uh, for this setting here I have a, a specific bow you have your secondary weapons for my warframe at the moment I have these two little they're called kunais, they're like a ninja stars throwing knives pretty much and of course you have your melee weapons which are those two scythes mini scythes on my back and you just wreck havoc. Every single Warframe has a unique set of abilities, four of them. Oh, this up here, got one, two, three, and four. Currently I'm not using the third ability on this character because it doesn't really help me out much. I barely ever use it, so I'm using one, two, and four. Every Warframe has a different set of abilities. They have different things that they can do, and they're used in different ways. Some Warframes are more tankish, like uh, Rhino or Frost. And their skills also help them to be more uh, more valuable as tanks, and pref and preferable classes for tanks. Uh, some other classes are they're much more squishy. They can like uh, you know they can be killed much easier, uh, like Mag and Nova, or I think uh, if her name is right, Ember. Uh, I think Ember as well, where they ju they're more the area of effect AOE damage characters. You know they do mass damage, you know, their skills allow for <laughs> pretty much obliterating a lot of characters, a lot of enemies on screen at once in one go. But they're a little bit easier to kill and there's healing warframes as well and so on and so forth. Uh, for this, I'm just gonna go straight away into a survival mode game just so I can show a little bit the mechanics and the graphics in the game are very good. Unfortunately I can only uh, record up to 720p for the details. So, this is pretty much as much, uh, the best you can get without actually dropping um, performance, in-game performance during the, uh, during the recording so I can play as well and show you what the game is like instead of just showing you frame rate drops. The whole layout of the game is, uh, you have a whole bunch of planets. You have the nine basic primary planets that we all know of, and there's another two, three. Some of them are actually their moons of different planets, like Phobos from Mars. And there's missions on all these planets, including even uh, boss missions. And the whole idea is that there's some kind of war going on with the Grineer, I think, and the Corpus, and the, uh, you're the Tenno, the ninja, space ninjas, and you're here to restore order. That's the whole idea of it, pretty much. You select the missions, just like I did before, as you saw. Uh, didn't go into explaining it. Um, and then each mission has different objectives and different things that you have to actually complete and complete for that mission to be... Co be completed. This one here is actually a survival mode mission. <clears throat> the whole idea behind it is... Actually, I'm not going to go into the details of every mission, what they're like. I'll probably make another video with all the different game types for Warframe and what they are. 
Uh, basically, this is survival mode. There's capture modes, exterminate. There's mobile defense. There's defense mode, uh, exterminate mode, uh, spy mode. You know, so I think I'm missing out a couple as well, but just from the sounds of it, you can pretty much tell that for a free-to-play game it has a lot of options, it has a lot of ways that you can play the game, it has a lot of different selections for missions and it doesn't have too many environments that's one thing that might become a little bit repetitive there's I think about four different kind of uh, environments, tile sets that have been created for the game for the moment but it's an ongoing process and they're, they're constantly improving the game, they're making it much much better I mean it started out with two tile sets it was the Corpus ships and the Grenier ships and then they came up with more tile sets, they fixed up the Grenier ships even more uh, you know they added an extra planet which was like an icy planet as a tile set then they came up with the Phobos tile set then um, on Jupiter they gave us new missions which was with the PlayStation 4 launch uh, of course right now I'm playing on PC with the PlayStation 4 launch we had an improvement in the graphics with tessellation and a whole bunch of extra things that they added, that, you know, little extras, including a new tile set on Jupiter, which is, I think it's the last tile set so far. There has been one more that is um, probably debated on when it's going to come out. It's uh, it's like a rainforest and it has cycles of day, and it has day and night cycles. That was the last tile set they had created. Now it was in an event I ran about a couple of weeks ago, and I'm guessing that they're going to slowly include that into the game as well. So it's an ongoing process. The game is not complete. Um, there's always more and more things to do in it. But even so, for the amount of uh, time that has been out, for the amount of work that has been put to it, it's got so many things for you to do. It's an awesome, it's a cool game. I've been playing it for almost a year now. And honestly, I'm still not bored. There's always new weapons that they keep adding to the game. There's new warframes, and uh, I'm just, it's it's addictive. It's an addictive game, as you can see here. Or you know, I haven't used a single skill, by the way. As you can see, it's fast, action-paced ninja work. Space ninjas at their best, and it's free. Above all, that's like that's the best thing about this game. It's free, completely free. You have access to almost every single thing in the game. Almost. There are some little things that, you know, like uh, profile icons or uh, Warframe colors, you know, so you can actually customize your Warframes a little bit better. We'll get into that later on as well. Um, and there's a whole bunch of things in this game that you can that are completely free. You can. You know, get your hands on it, and there are some things that you have to you have to pay to actually per you have to purchase to have them unlocked in the game. Um, but generally, it's not a pay-to-win game, and you have access to literally almost everything in the game. You know, um, you have access to almost every single weapon in the game. You have access to every single Warframe in the game. Uh, all of them are except for the initial uh, Excalibur Prime Warframe which was you know it's well, it was for the founders it's a shame I actually missed out on that um, I was thinking about buying that would have been cool now to have all the newbie players see me with a Warframe that doesn't exist anymore in the game but apart from that Warframe I don't think there's there's really little content that is not available without purchasing it um, you know Right now, I'm just showing a little bit while I'm talking. This mission, it's a small introduction to what the game is like. I was saying before that every single Warframe has their own skills and they play differently and so on and so forth. This Warframe here is, for me, the ninja of the game. This is the ninja of Warframe. His skills are shurikens, he throws these which is one shuriken to the target that you actually located and another one that actually curves a little bit wait, where are you? please don't tell me that they changed that with the upgrade there was a patch today but anyway, usually your shurikens your shuriken skill, not the ones that you're throwing as, an, as a primary weapon they do a lot of damage and there's a second one that arcs there you go that arcs onto the characters and hits them that's his first attack, uh, his first special skill, you might say. Kind of like uh, League of Legends and uh, Dota, you, know, you have four skills, same thing here, you have four skills. And 
the difference is there's no passive skills here. You know, all your skills are active. And each skill pretty much consumes more energy, which is the equivalent of mana in, uh, I don't know, if people play RPGs and so on and so forth, the equivalent of mana in other games, which is uh, energy here. Every skill as it, uh, the higher it gets, the more energy it accumulates. The first skill accumulates 50, the second skill, number two at the top over there, which is my favorite skill with this character, and that's the whole point behind Ash. That's uh, the Warframe, he's called Ash. That's the whole point behind this Warframe. It consumes 50 energy. Uh, then the third one, which I don't use, it's a teleport skill. It uh, consumes 75. And then the last skill, which is a kick ass blade storm kind of thing, he vanishes and kills all the enemies around him, uh, consumes 100 energy. Uh, you might notice that as I'm using these skills, they're actually consuming much less on me because I've upgraded the character. You can you can put mods in them. They're your passives, and build your characters up as you rank them through from zero to rank thirty, which is the maximum for every single weapon and character. Now, for the second skill, which is my favorite and the whole point behind this character, it's the vanish. You know, it's go completely stealth. You have more critical attacks while you're in this, and if you upgrade it the way I have. It lasts longer, you can actually upgrade it even more to last you about 20 seconds. Now it's at 10 seconds. Nobody sees you, you act, you cause more damage. And with the upgrades that I have, it costs less, it costs about 25 energy to use it. And I also have uh, another aura on me that replenishes my energy a little bit uh, every second. Meaning that I can pretty much play the entire game always vanished. And we'll do that for a bit actually on my way to extraction I'll try to stay as much vanished as I possibly can just for the sake of it, I mean that's the whole fun behind this character oh crap don't fall down okay, well, save that now for the maneuvers, basically you have, you can run, you attack with um, your ranged weapons, or your bow, and of course I've chosen more of the, um, you know, traditional kind of weapons. It has shotguns, rifles, snipers, it's got you know machine guns, it's got burst rifles, burst shotguns, handguns that are automatic with uh, you know it's, it's got everything pretty much it's not just traditional kind of weaponry same way that the enemies have all these weapons and they're using against me so you have your ranged attack you have your melee attack from controls you have your guard block Okay, please, up here. You have a charge attack for your melee. You just hold down the attack and you... Slash them a little bit harder. And these specific weapons here, actually, every single weapon has a different uh, attribute, has different properties, and they behave in a different way. And they're actually better uh, against specific enemies as well. Some of them are more well-armored, some of them have better shields, and, you know, their weapons are... You know, you change your weapons according to who the enemies are, or uh, if you play like I do, you just get the weapons that you really love and uh, equip them in with different mods to make them uh, to make them efficient in every single scenario. Where do you think you're going? I did not like that. Okay, then you have an attack in a slamming attack some moves it actually you know creates an AOE of attack which drops everybody on the ground you have slide after you run you know you have your sprints sorry you have sprint as you sprint crouching which is you know, just plain crouching slides as you slide you can become a little bit more difficult for them to target you now, if you slide and you do a melee, you're actually doing this slide attack, which causes a lot of damage, and it's nice to get used to. 
Then you have jump, of course. You have jump and well, you run, jump, and slide in the air, which is a fly kick. And you can actually drop the enemy on the ground. You have a slam attack on the ground, a downed attack, I think it's called. I'm not sure. Where you kill them on the ground. You can run on walls. You can climb on things. You can pretty much do all the ninja, cool ninja stuff that you can do in other games as well. Let me just activate some of these life supports. Okay. Now you can run across walls. Jump. <laughs> you can climb on walls. You can jump off walls really far. You can run up them and slide off those walls jump off them, you have attacks that are slicing, kind of like a dash attack off the wall, I'll wait for him to appear so I can show you it. Ooh, someone's dodging. Okay. Let me just do my big power up as well. This is the fourth power up for this specific Warframe. It just disappears and starts killing everybody all over the place. Currently, I actually have changed my mods a little bit, so I don't have that much energy at the top. You can really customize your characters in a whole bunch of different ways. And there's the pickups on the floor. I think I covered everything with the maneuvers. I don't think there's anything that I missed out on, is there? Oh, you can flip after you slide, you jump, and you do that, and you fly kick, and you jump again. And this is a good way to conserve, conserve stamina and also get quickly to a specific location. No. You don't have to. You can just simply run. And you have your pickups. You have pickups for all the different kind of ammunitions. You have these blue orbs here which are your energy. You have red orbs which are for health. In this specific game mode, those backpacks that you see are actually whoa. They're actually the uh, extra life support. Crap, and my life support's gone. These here are mods, and that orange thing that I picked up, that was like a circle, those are materials. You can collect different, a lot of different materials through the different planets. Um, they're specific to each planet, so you have, like, say, uh, Orokin cells, which are very important. They fall on two kinds of planets, only Saturn and Earth, I think. Not sure. Um... You, know, you have a whole bunch of things that you collect for building items in the foundry as you'll get to see later on. Um, that's pretty much it. You have barrels, of course, that's containers. Oh yeah, and there's the white orbs here, which give you affinity. Affinity is your, it's your experience in this game. Affinity, as you'll see right here, Affinity accumulates for every single item and your Warframe as well. As you can see, I have rank 22, 21, 30, and 30. I have full on the Knai and the Dual Commons, which are my weapons. These are the things that I have obtained, my rewards, and so on and so forth. Uh, affinity is your experience. It is accumulated by through kills, of course. And, you know, once you reach level cap for a weapon or a Warframe, then it's just a matter of customizing them and doing a whole bunch of other little neat nasty tricks to make them stronger. We'll get into that right now. At the end of each mission you have a small overall, uh, a small, what's it called? Oh, the word is not coming to me right now. Whatever, you have little stats here showing you your kills and everything you've done throughout the mission. Um, as a free-to-play online game, the whole idea for it is designed mostly for you to play in groups of four. Uh, you can't have larger teams than four. Hence the other three slots here that are with uh, little dashes and dots next to my name. <clears throat> Where you actually compare your stats with each other at the end of each mission if you want. Um, and that's pretty much more or less the introduction, the mechanics and the in-game what it's about. Now let's look at the content. Basically, like I mentioned before, you have your missions here. And you click into them and you start from closest to the sun and slowly make your way out 
every single mission you pretty much you, you will learn the icons what they mean there's nightmare missions once you've actually completed them there's boss missions which are with this little icon here and so on and so forth and going over the, each mission shows you the details what faction you're fighting against the levels and the mission type here it's mobile defense here it's capture here it's defense sabotage exterminate there's a lot of different modes and so on and so forth um, when you have an incomplete area it looks something like this the blue missions here show you what's unlocked and can be played but has not been completed and the locked ones obviously become unlocked once you play the blue ones and whatever is white has already been completed um, to the left here we have the materials that are dropped in each area and that's the core of the game of what you're doing there's a lot of drops uh, bosses give you a lot of items for building um, for building your specific warframes and so on and so forth and on top of those missions we have on the left here we have alerts these are kind of like custom like you know one time missions they you know they change and have a, they have a countdown and they give you different rewards um, they could give you blueprints for specific weapons they could give you blueprints for items for even uh, for warframes and so on and so forth so it's very important to keep the, keep these in mind as well and they change the um, whatever was on that stage they change the parameters for example here we have oh it's actually the same level 2023 20, it could be a level 2023 20, area and the alert might be level 5 to 7 I don't know uh, the initial mission might have been a rescue but the alert might actually be uh, an assassination you know, it changes things around and these are you know one-time missions that are available then you have the operations in the operations they are the same thing as the alerts the only difference is that you actually have usually a side to select <clears throat> and after selecting a side to play for you accumulate a certain amount of times that you play for that side and you collect the loot that that side offers you according to what you wanna wanna play uh, the difference is with the operations is besides the fact that usually you have a side sometimes you don't to select from is that they're they're accumulated so you now want a hundred percent this here was ninety five percent uh, a short while ago the more people that play it the percentage increases until it's completed and once it's completed if you have partaken in the mission as well and you have played it for this one all of them all these types you have to play it five times on a specific faction that you want so you can get the specific blueprint once the operation is complete you're given you know you're given that uh, little reward uh, in the form of a uh, mail up here in your inbox as you can see from some previous ones that I had uh, that I had done it gives you the items the attachments what you actually what you've actually won um, from game content apart from that you also have keys and you select specific keys which are all the different types of missions and there's different levels for them uh, they're voids void keys they, they don't actually take place on any planet at all they have their own tile set it's actually another tile set that I forgot about and the derelicts have their own tile set you can build those for credits uh, whilst the void keys are collected through defense and survival missions mostly and they have different drops of course uh, not so much in the materials isn't the most important part. The most important part is the drops that they have for items and warframes. You can find some of the more prestige items here, like uh, prime warframes and prime weaponry. Uh, apart from all that, you have your social window here to the side. <clears throat> These are pretty self-explanatory. You get to learn them on, on the go. Uh, you have your profile up here, which gives you your statistics personal statistics, clan statistics, you know, and there's an entire list of things for you to actually look through. Time played, kills, total kills, where are they? Combat stats, you know. What about total kills? Total kills, for example, you know, your most used weapons and so on and so forth. Conclave stats, these are for, uh, these are PvP, these are the only PvP form in the game. 
Um, I think it has your warframes, how much you've leveled them up, and so on and so forth. But the conclave, they're usually depicted with two little swords. There they are. And it shows you the level 500 to 700 in Conclave, for example, for these missions here. And you go up against other Tenno uh, Space Ninjas. Your Conclave is accumulated with your mods, your weapons, your ranking. You know, pretty much just buffing up your character slowly, slowly. Now, apart from logging out, your options, the other things that you have. Uh, void Keys is the Codex. It's like a gallery, pretty much, for all the... Uh, or warframes and so on and so forth for example you know it shows you each warframe it shows you the statistics to the side it has an explanation for every single skill what it does you know I was playing with Ash before here we go smoke screen drops a smoke bomb that stuns enemies and obscures their vision rendering Ash invisible for a short time blade storm and so on and so forth it shows you your statistics your base statistics health shield armor power stamina uh, I don't think I covered this. Shield was the blue number, <clears throat> top right on my statistics that was decreasing with every hit that was um, that I was taking, and it increases again, and it protects your health. Health does not increase unless you're healed or you collect health orbs. Once your health decreases to minimum, you die. And if you're with a team, you actually get into an incapacitated mode, and a friend can come over you and revive you. So the gallery here also shows you what Warframes you have leveled up. Uh, Frost Prime, as you can see, he's almost rank 30. The ones with the stars are ranked 30 Warframes. And so on and so forth. The same thing goes for weapons. You know, you can check the weapons out. Um, okay, it's behind him. Let's just see. And the stats, what the actual weapon does, and so on and so forth. Little descriptions. Pretty cool because before this, a lot of things you actually had to go onto the Warframe wiki or search in the market and the foundry to pretty much figure out what each weapon does. And these are all the weapons, by the way. There's a lot of weapons in the game, as you can see. And the Warframes are not that few either. I mean, all these are the Warframes you can collect and play with enemies, a large amount of enemies as well, all these are the enemies included in the game it has grown, it has grown a lot since it first came out uh, for a free to play game, it's really amazing, it's very addictive as well, very fun very fun action combat um, moving on with the content, we have the foundry here all your br blueprints and all the materials that you get uh, they're used in your foundry for building things you know right now I'm building a forma these are blueprints as you can see these are the materials that are needed for them this is the build button which is actually highlighted when you can build them and when you can't it's you know, shaded shows you apart from the requirements of the materials how many hours it will take for it to be built and how many credits are required for it and you can see them in categories as well ready to build warframe parts um, rifles handguns melee and so on and so forth Oh, your foundry is pretty much, yeah, it's self-explanatory, it's simple, and you slowly get to learn what item is what and how it all works. Um, Titan Extractor was something that I want to cover. It's a pretty neat and handy little thing. Uh, you have Titan Extractors, you can deploy them on specific planets. You go to a planet and you press Deploy Extractor. I have no available ones at the moment. When you do, it opens a little window. You select the Titan Extractor that you want to use which is built in the foundry and you can buy it in the market for in-game credits and not real life currency and what that does is it gives you a, a percentage chance every four hours to collect a certain amount of materials from the materials on that planet at the moment I have put one on Saturn you can see it from the icon progress 8% health 100% on Saturn you you have a chance of actually finding Orokin cells which are you know, it's, they're, they're among the most handy um, resources in the game, you know, along with another four or five really important resources. Um, you have the market here in different categories. 
which is for real life currency, but it also has a lot of things that can be bought with credits. For example, Warframe blueprints are bought from here for credits. Same thing as weapons. You know, these are the blueprints here. Some weapons are actually not available uh, as blueprints. You, as you can see, the <coughs> secondary weapons are. These are all the secondary weapons. There's an extra five altogether when compared to the blueprints which have all these empty uh, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can buy them only with real life currency for example the twin gremlins they drop through alert missions or they're even dropped through bosses as well so you can find a lot of these weapons in the game as well it's just some of them are harder to find obviously um, and apart from these there's also the prime weapons which are not you are not purchasable with uh, money or credits some here are, are purchasable with credits as you can see straight away off the go on the go you know platinum is this little symbol down here um, like I was saying there are some weapons that the prime versions which cannot be purchased with real money either you have to find them uh, in the game itself which include for example here I have the darker prime Bang Prime, Orthos Prime, as you noticed, those were not, probably didn't notice those, let's see here. Okay, Rifles, we have Bratton Prime, Latron Prime, and the Paris Prime. Uh, and the Supra, if you'll notice, in the foundry, in the market, none of those weapons are available for purchasing. Primary weapons, none of them are here, including the Supra, which is not a prime weapon. There's a certain amount of weapons that can be built in your clan dojo, it's kind of like the guild, uh, the guild base you might call it from in other games, and there's specific weapons that you can build only through your clan dojo, and some you know pretty neat tricks you can do in there as well. Now the last thing about um, the content of the game, the most important part of the game that is a little bit hard to get to used to to learn, is the arsenal. Here you equip your Warframe, uh, you select which Warframe you want to work on to begin with. You know, you you can fix their appearances, all the different colors and so on and so forth. Uh, on col the color sets, it only has the classic to begin with. The rest of them you have to buy them. These are all the different color sets. And the Halloween color set was actually a gift for one credit you know you customize your character the way you want to see them you actually have helmet choices which give you a certain amount of things well this one gives you alternate helmet for, okay, it doesn't actually change anything um, I'll go back to Ash so I can portray that better Ash appearance you have your helmet okay this one here adds energy reduces speed it's one helmet that Ash has the other one is a Scorpion Ash Helmet. Increases stamina and sacrifices power efficiency. We'll go into that later. That's the other helmet. Some extra little things you can buy here and there. Uh, event badges, Sindana, whatever it's called. It's this floaty thing on their backs. You know, these are mostly just for customizing their looks. And you have three sets as well, so you can just have three different color sets and different animation sets and so on and so forth already on the go for you whenever you know on the fly whenever you want to just change just you know same thing goes for weapons you can change their colors and so on and so forth um, you equip them which weapons are available these are the different types of weapons and you see it equipped on your character I'll just put the dual camas at the moment, they're among my favorite weapons. Then you have sentinels, these little things here which uh, if you noticed during the game I, um, it was making me vanish when I was becoming blue and it fires at enemies as well. You can have different types of uh, different types of sentinels, they're for different kind of, uh, you know, they do different things. You have different attacks for them and you can also, you also rank them up as well. As you can see rank 30, their weapons and so on and so forth. 
Then you have your inventory which shows you an overall of your warframes, the weapons that you have, all the items that you have collected, your blueprints, everything that you could see in your foundry pretty much, and all your materials, your sentinels, your skins, which are helmets, just like the helmets that I showed for Ash that I have collected for other players. Frost helmet. Okay, that seems to be a bug. Frost helmet and shows me Excalibur. Okay. Uh, extractors, I have one extractor at the moment. That's pretty much it. Now, the whole idea behind this thing here is increasing your conclave at the bottom and creating a certain amount of damages, a certain type of damages on your character and passives. Build your character the way that you want to build him and the way that you actually enjoy to play him. It is advised by most people to actually, you know, have different layouts and different um, you know, different builds for different situations. If you're against uh, corpus enemies or if you're against grenier enemies and so on and so forth, you change your style. Me personally, I just you know, I mostly build my characters and my weapons to the way that I like them the most. The weapons, I might change them around a little bit, depending on uh, enemies against me, but, you know, I'm not really that competitive either to really care or to really have noticed such a huge difference with regards to all these things. I mostly build it according to how I like to play the game, which happens from this little button here, Upgrade. Once you go into upgrade, you can see a whole bunch of mods here. Um, the mod that I had collected in the game, which looked like a big fusion core generator thing. These are all the mods that you can actually place onto your character. Now, the way this works is each rank you get one slot, and each mod, or one point, each mod has a certain amount of points in it. For you to use a certain mod, this one here, uh, this one here, for example, it has number two on it, it means you need two points for you to be able to use it anywhere. Now, what you need to notice is that all these have little symbols on the top of them. Uh, the initial Warframe of Ash actually has less of the symbols. Uh, they have these little symbols on the top of them. If you get a, a modification in an empty slot, something that doesn't have anything on it, and its cost is seven points, crap, 10 points for example, then it will reduce 10 points. If you're going to put this in a slot with a different symbol on it, it will increase the cost of it and it will give you 13 points. However, if you put it somewhere, let's take another one actually. Uh, for a better example, okay, redirection. See here it's 14 points on its own. If you put it in the wrong slot, it goes up to 18 points cost. And if you put it on the same slot, it, it actually halves it. So it goes to 7 points. The whole idea here is to be able to customize your character according to the symbols. And you learn this as you go on, obviously. Slowly, slowly what each symbol does, what every single thing does. This mod, for example, gives me 440% shield capacity. Uh, you know, you have your little auras as well which are, they actually influence the entire team. It's um, the modification that I had before during the game that was uh, replenishing my energy, uh, where it's an energy siphon. So as soon as I press it, put it here, again the same thing happens with the auras. If the auras have a different symbol, um, then they cost more. Uh, they actually actually no, this is wrong. The auras, what they do is they actually give you extra, they give you extra points on your Warframe. You'll notice here that I'm level 22 but I have level, I have 44 points. We'll get to that later. The energy siphon says 7 on it. If I put it on the same symbol, it gives me actually 14 extra points instead of actually giving me 7. And you'll notice that the number here has increased to 58. Now the reason why I have 44 instead of 22 points is because of this little thing here which is an Orokin reactor and you can put that on your weapons as well. There's uh, the Orokin cell, I think, I'm not sure. A blue one. Orokin catalyst, there you go. There's an Orokin catalyst for your weapons. See the Cernos is without, doesn't have one in it. You can upgrade it, collect the item by either buying it or finding parts of it and building it. 
and you can see it's got 21 level or rank 21 and it's got 21 points but if you go to my dual commas I've already put one of those in and instead of 30 it's giving me 60 allowing me to put more items on it, on, on it and so on and so forth now the another thing you'll notice is the polarization here when it says polarize with these little items here what you can do is you can go inside and you can change any slot to any symbol you want meaning that if you have like see these weapons here they don't have any symbols anywhere I could polarize this item eight times and change you know put a symbol on every single location accordingly to what mods I want to use giving me more space to actually put even bigger mods perhaps you know right at the moment I have the last space here which is not used at all and you know just by polarizing one of those slots uh, I can you know make use of the final slot as well and put more modifications into my weapon uh, keep in mind that when you polarize something the rank is decreased to zero <clears throat> and you have to level it up again up to rank 30 going off to Ash just so I can demonstrate this there's four little stars here meaning that it's been polarized four times I have changed I think one two three and four symbols and it's actually given me it's not 44 it's 58 amount of mods but if you actually really count the mods themselves and their 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 cost meaning their quality this one here is 14 it's just half because it's on the same slot so it's 14 plus another 12 plus another 8 that's already 20 that's 34 plus another 8 here that's uh, 42 plus another 8 here we got 50 already it's gone over well over 44 you know and I got another 1 2 3 4 mods to count uh, so it's very very handy to keep in mind what the polarities are what the symbols at the top are the fact that you can polarize your characters and your items putting the specific auras that you want onto them as well and in the end the equivalent with an Oricon cell as well the equivalent of uh, say a Warframe, a rank 30 Warframe with all these mods and all these polarities and all these uh, Oricon cells is a rank 120 around about, I think I've calculated it so you know your character goes up to rank 30 but with all these little extra neat tricks and uh, modifications that you do in them you buff up their power to actually be that of a rank rank 120 we might we might assume a 120 rank character same thing goes for the weapons as well um, another thing to keep in mind is the mods you can these are all the mods that I have at the moment there's a lot more that I haven't found these are the fusion cores anyway what you can do is you can transmute mods that you don't want with other mods and end up getting a sp and applying it and end up getting a random different mod or you can fuse mods to make them stronger for example let's just say I get the sherry can then I click on fusion and then I go and find all the other sherry can mods I'm not seeing any there we go rank that up and each time I rank it up it actually makes it stronger and increases the number up here as well with fusion cores you can put them on anything pretty much actually you can put anything on anything it's just that you know there's sometimes no point in using mods that you might need however it's better than selling them since credits are relatively easy to get by and that's how you increase the power in your mods, like this mod here for example, Little Torrent, I have it on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ranks uh, which is maximum, you know and that increases the actual power of each mod as well increasing also the amount of points that are needed for each mod and I think that pretty much covers it all uh, talked about the content more or less, the different types of stages, the warframes, different types of weapons, the market, the foundry leveling up and customizing your character um, I think that's that pretty much covers it all oh one of the things that I forgot to mention about the maneuverability is you also have 
a dive, uh, a dive roll, which is just the you press the rock button once, and they dive, which is very handy for dodging specific uh, attacks. And you also have a backflip, which is rarely used, in my opinion. Whilst you're inside the, while you're zoomed uh, with a specific weapon, you can actually uh, press back and again the run button, the sprint button, and it performs a backflip. And we have a new operation here, for example. There you go. See, now we have different things that are actually collectible. So, for me, for example, I would prefer the organ seals out sales, whereas in the other one I would prefer playing with the grenier. This, uh, this time you play with the corpus and you're actually on their side. You, uh, you fight with them. And let's see if there's an alert with a different reward. No. Uh, I guess I can't show you that now. That's pretty much more or less what the game is all about uh, and how it's played. Uh, over here is the profile, like I think I already mentioned. And oh, last thing here is to keep in mind is the amount of ways that you can actually play the game as well. Solo is the only mode that you can pause the game in by pressing escape. And nobody can join the game, nobody can be invited to the game at all. Uh, it's just, it's as it says, solo. Host a private game with, uh, host a private game with friends. Oh, you can, I guess you can go solo by creating your own squad as well. Okay. Then you have your invite only, which means that the only people that can be that can join the game is if you have invited them. Then you have the private private games. You host the game and anyone can jump in from uh, into it from your friends just by joining your session or from you inviting them. And of course there's online version which just teams you up with any random person online at that moment very handy as well if you don't have any friends or if you you know there's a lot of people always online playing it for example let's just go to the first planet you know there's two people playing in here another two here it has it with a little uh, icon above to the right of the name of it three here four here two here five people playing here seven here you know so you can actually just be teamed up with uh, with people nobody playing here you can be teamed up with people on the go just uh, by selecting online and I think that pretty much covers it all my opinion it's it's a game that you do not want to miss uh, it's totally worth it it's totally worth it to actually even pay pay for content in this game uh, the likes of um, for example let's just say go to inventory the likes of uh, Warframe slots, so you can buy more Warframe, so you can have more Warframes. Weapon slots, so you can have more weapons. These can become a little bit tedious, a little bit tiring for you to, you know, be switching back and forth from weapons and selling weapons so you can get your mastery rank up. You know, these are all, you know, you figure this out as the game goes on. You know, the, uh, it's a game that that I would recommend anytime. I mean, I've been playing it since it's it went open better. Uh, patch 7, I think it was. And I, I'm still not bored of it. I'm still not bored of it. They keep adding things to it. They keep changing character. Uh, they keep adding characters. They keep adding weapons, tile sets, enemies, events. Uh, it's just, it's really fun. And for a free-to-play game, you really should not miss out on, uh, on this game. And that's it. Thank you for viewing this video, and I hope uh, you enjoyed it.